Howdy folks, it's Barry here. Welcome uh, to my MBK Easter show special. It's all about Easter. Uh, if you're watching this in Halloween, happy Halloween to you. So people celebrate Easter in different ways. I've never really got my head around the whole egg decorating thing. Now this is my best attempt with a smiley face and it's cracked anyway, but people go to proper decent levels right there of making their eggs look extravagant. Uh, there's also the Easter bonnet thing, which I also don't get. I think Lady Gaga possibly uh, got some inspiration for her wardrobe right there though. But for me, nothing beats the good old Easter egg hunt. There is something cool about seeing the kids running around with their baskets, collecting the eggs, having fun, right? That's what it's all about. Having fun and laughing and all that stuff. But what happens if somebody discovers a hand grenade on one of those Easter egg hunts? Oh, that happened? Yep, it did. On a busy road in Somerset, close to where I live, there's some kids taking part in an Easter egg hunt and a little boy was there carrying his collection when somebody spots he stood on a funny object. On closer inspection, he was stood on a live World War II hand grenade. The device was later destroyed by controlled explosion. I think it's fair to say that that treasure hunt went off with a bit of a bang. <laughs> At least they didn't find a body or uh, something like that, right? Oh, that happened too. Yes, it did. In Knoxville, an Easter egg hunt went sour when a corpse was found under the decking of a house. Apparently the smell led the lady to the body after having the odour around her house for two weeks. Um, how about something nicer? Here's three Easter eggs that I would love to eat right now. We've got this chocolate egg that is completely filled to the brim with salted caramel and comes complete with its own spoon. I kind of feel like I need to make a giant one of those with a shovel. There's this grooved egg one right there. Oh my goodness, it does kind of look like a kicking tee at a rugby match or American football game, like someone's gonna go and mm, like punt it somewhere. But the slats in it does kind of make me feel like you're getting ripped off and that you should individually post through the bits of chocolate that you're being paid for, ultimately. So you are losing out. Mm. Oh my goodness, there is this white chocolate encased sugar crystal one, which looks so, so good. Kind of does remind me a little bit of the stones from the Indiana Jones film, Kalima, Shatile, all that stuff. And that Easter egg is what I got Mrs. Barry for Easter. But um, I'm not filming this on Easter, so hopefully she's enjoying it right now. Mm. Speaking of Indiana Jones, I've got a chilled monkey brains uh, bowl on the way to me right now. So it's actually like the one in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, so keep an eye out for that. Now in movies and also video games and other things, there's things called Easter eggs. They're kind of like a, oh my gosh, that's a really cool hidden thing moment. And there is one in Indiana Jones and also several other movies that I like. That's right, in one Indiana Jones film, there is a scene with hieroglyphics on the wall. And if you look closer, you'll notice that they are of two very similar characters, R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. In the Polar Express movie, just because I'm a hardcore Back to the Future fan, if you look very closely, you can see a flux capacitor. Great Scott! And in the movie Tron, if you look very closely in one scene, you will see a familiar video game character, Pac-Man, on the wall. Now that was actually in the original movie Tron. I really hate this whole thing of Hollywood remaking the old school movies. If you ever touch the Goonies, people are going to just, just disintegrate. That's not much of a threat, is it? But you know what I'm saying. Uh, so here's a, a gif of an egg prank that I found online. It was funnier when I first watched it, but now it just looks a bit weird. You know, you can just sort of try it for yourself if you want. You, you didn't have to do that. I should have probably left that bit out, really. Now, arguably, the oldest Easter egg ever created was by a company called Fry's, who are based in Bristol, where I was born and very close to where I live right now. Uh, they later became Cadbury, who my nan, uh, God bless her soul, uh, worked for, and then they now have been bought out by Kraft. And now Kraft are slowly taking over the world. You will know Kraft have taken over the world when they own the rights to My Virgin Kitchen and basically me. <clears throat> are you after something a little bit more expensive? In 2007, an egg covered in diamonds sold for almost £9 million. The egg is very special because every hour, a cockerel made of jewels pops up from the top of the egg, flaps its wings four times, nods its head three times, and makes a crowing noise. Sorry, £9 million? For that price, I would dress up as a cock rule and fly to your house wherever you are in the world and just do a random dance and nod my head. Oh my gosh, £9 million? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And this chocolate bunny will set you back an extravagant $66,000. What a weird looking thing. It took two days to make and weighs five kilograms. You've got a look at the eyes on the thing though. It's kind of like the Terminator of Easter eggs. I need your clothes, your boots, and your Easter eggs. Although it's kind of like making me realize if you want to make a really expensive Easter egg, don't worry about the chocolate, just stick some diamonds in it. 
Yeah. Possibly the world's most oldest uneaten Easter egg belongs to a Maureen Harrison. You know when you're younger and your mum was like, don't lick the electrical sockets or eat your carrots because that way you'll see in the dark? Well, there's that other one about not eating too much chocolate and you become sick. She did that. Yes, good old Maureen Harrison did exactly that. Her grandmother said, if you eat this Easter egg, you're going to end up getting sick. So bless her, she did just that and left it in its cupboard for, well, its entire life. And I presume it's still there. Got to imagine it would probably taste and smell like rotten egg right now. That was not an intentional egg pun and it's starting to get holes in it. So eat your Easter eggs, kids, and then go for a run. The biggest chocolate Easter egg ever made was in Italy in 2011. It was 10.3 meters high and 7,200 kilograms in weight. It was taller than a giraffe and heavier than an elephant. Now, personally, I really like doing my giant food videos and perhaps with the help of Kraft, I can maybe make a massive one next year. Maybe we should start a campaign going. Ooh. Here's a scary Easter bunny montage uh, to some soothing music. Alright, that's enough. That was pretty weird. So all in all guys, when it comes to Easter for me, I think I'm better off sticking uh, to a hard boiled egg. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I did a video making square eggs uh, quite recently. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But here's one last link to show you of a guy peeling the egg, a hard boiled egg, like a boss. The steel is in the peel and just a small tip off, bigger tip off right here. And then just like, perfect peel off egg. Yes, that has to be up there. One of the coolest things I've ever seen. And FYI, I've been trying to do it for the whole of this video and I'm just going to stick to just picking my egg. Uh, that's it, guys. Check out my last three videos if you haven't seen them already. I hope you have an amazing Easter. Unless, as I say, it is Halloween, then go out trick-or-treating and all that stuff. See you next time.